questions. Can you hear this? Mm -hmm. yeah. You can yell out questions and then Paul can answer them. <laughs> or I'll answer. people worry about, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. A lot of people worry about getting your dead center before you <coughs> open the clay. Yeah. I say dead center makes dead pots. You <laughs> <laughs> need a live center. There you go. Live center is moving. Clay's got to move. And uh, it's always centered. One time, Volkus was asked, oh, how do you know where center is? He said, oh, you dummy. Center's already there. All you have to do is pile the clay up around it. <laughs> <laughs> this clay is not pugged. It's not deaired the way most clay is when you buy it in a box. When you buy it in a box, the manufacturer has extruded the clay the way he mixes it first. And then he extrudes it through a big machine into a round shape and it's easier for him to bag it and box it and weigh it and all that kind of stuff. But as a professional, I say it's lousy, shitty clay. It won't move. It's so stiff. But the earring, most people, if they try it, especially when they're learning, can't center it. They're just going back and forth, back and forth because the clay's too stiff and, and too resistive. It's much better if it's if it's what I call an open body, one that hasn't been had, had been forced through that machine. Uh, this was mixed at Lagoon Clay. Uh, it's a special request. They didn't run it through the pump mill, and they didn't deer it, and it, it feels good to me. Therefore, it's alive. Therefore, it's alive. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she can tell you a really interesting experience with clay. Tell them. <laughs> <laughs> I've been teaching for 30 years at a small liberal arts college in Pennsylvania, and my students are all beginners, except for the few that um, figure out to go on in it. I mean, take more classes. Um, and we buy box clay from standard ceramics. And for many, many years, we did not have a, a, a soldier. We had no mixer. And then finally, after begging, well, I had a big fight with everybody. Anyway, I finally got a mixer. And then when, so my students always had a hard time centering because they didn't understand. It didn't react to them. Like, you no, know, where they push. It has to be, for beginners, I think the clay has to be very sensitive so that they learn what the pushing does and what that means. So after we got the Soldner mixer, then we would take the, uh, each student had to, because we don't have storage for tons and tons of clay, but now the hallway is filled with baked clay. I mean, you know, dry clay. But each student buys a 25-pound bag. We, they cut it up, 
throw it in the mixer, then they throw in um, a big bucket of slop, and then we put in, then they start mixing it, and we add dry clay, but we're only adding fire clay, one fire clay, one bulk, you know, bulk clay, and sand, just to dry it up then. Therefore, when we get the clay out, it is a very open body, and the centering goes very quickly and much, much easier without the tears and the screaming and everything, because it does move with them. I mean, they're learning what the pressure is about, and there's a reaction to where they push. Where with the baked clay straight from the bag, it was too tight. Even with, even when the clay is soft, when it's tight, it doesn't react the way this does. So it made a huge difference in my teaching. I stopped crying too. <laughs> Uh, let me tell them how much the wheel is. Okay, the wheel um, that Paul's using is uh, the S100, and it's $1,039, and that's wherever you want it. And then we... What do you mean wherever you want it? They can take it from here. It doesn't need chip. Yeah, okay, so you have to take it from here. Yeah, this, this one is, the shipping is paid. Yeah. Not, not the, not the right, right. Yeah, and the shipping, that's what I thought. Yeah. So if somebody wanted this, this one, they would take it with them or they could get it shipped free? No. no. <laughs> it's been shipped here by the company free. You take it from here. So that's a really good so price. The shipping <laughs> is not on there. But I thought also that anybody who attends the workshop gets a discount if they order one, not the same discount as this. You get 10% off the price if you've attended the workshop and order a wheel. You'll get 10% off. And all the wheels are on this sheet. For how many months up after the workshop? Well, I don't think it matters too much. How many, how, what's the time, what's the time to limit? You'll have to ask him the time limit, too. Okay, well, I, I just talked to him, and I'm not going to go. You can call again. This will take me the rest of the day. Not that you're not in charge. Did you mean on the wheelhead? Um, I use that if it's a really big, like, big bowl that you can pick up. But normally I don't bother with that. That's called thrown and altered. <laughs> <laughs> Do you just make a bunch of pieces and then some you use and some you don't, or do you use all of them, or it just whatever happens? Whatever happens. Yeah. Also, you can move it around on a burla. You don't have to pick it up. Mm. Just store it what you just made. So it's kind of an important tool. Yeah.
Uh -huh. He was already backing it. Oh, okay, so, so forget that. Yeah, they should pay more. It's, it's, it's right. there for okay. convenience. That's the only reason. I got you. Too bad for teachers, high yeah, school teachers. I know what you're That's talking right. about. Eighty percent of them wouldn't continue throwing, especially the young females who were smaller and built. And they couldn't do it. Uh, Don Wright's or Focus was alive. Anybody who works big, right. especially kind of place they usually bag. All they have to do is not put it to the mixer right. and shove it in the bag. Right. They might charge a little bit more, but if you order a certain quantity, I know standard ceramics is very agreeable this way. If you order a certain quantity, they'll do special orders, but especially if they don't have to make a different mix. Right. And you just, just request their standard thing. That, is, don't that it be unpugged. Well, no, it's not less work because they have the hand that stick it into the bag because otherwise it comes out in the tube and they just slice, slice, That's slice true. it. Okay. And it was automatic. Mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. But it would make a big difference. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. That was discouraging for some kids. Yeah. Very for adult students. And as I get older, it's difficult. It's much easier on your hands when it's not Besides, you're going to avoid back aches, right. hernias, I know. carpal tunnel. Sit there struggling. You can beat you at your work. Thank you. Heart flies. That's the only way I could find for reconditioning, too, of getting rid of the slop buckets. Because they do not recondition unless they're getting, so they're buying a bag of clay and they're doubling it. Oh, I see. It gets uh -huh. doubled that way. And the college pays for the dry, dried mix. They have to buy the bag. But then we're using up all of our slop. It's the first, when we started doing that, it was the only time we were burying clay by the end of that term of the year. Of dried old clay and everybody bothered. If you wedge it a lot with a lot of water, wouldn't that help with that? That's well, work. wedging it with water is only makes it sloppy. It doesn't really get wedged in. Water's not so great for clay. I mean, a little bit of it. <coughs> no, these are students that are spoiled, so it would not <laughs> I mean, they're 18, and they probably, like most students, 18, have never cleaned their room either. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't clean fine. Right. <laughs>
to come up and kind of look closely. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess you're not selling any raffle tickets, huh, Mr. exhibit in Balcoa, and uh, so I decided I wanted to impress them with <laughs> the halo, <laughs> and 
And I kept trying and kept trying and kept trying and nothing would work. One of my problems was that uh, they didn't have garbage cans, metal garbage cans, all they have are plastic. So I had to make do with, uh, well I found an oil drum on the side of the road someplace and I hacksawed it in a half really beautifully made two beautiful smoking chambers. And I found a billboard, a metal billboard that I could use for a lid, but it could not produce the halo. And after about two days, three days of trying, I woke up in the middle of the night and I said, oh, now I know what's the difference. I kept saying to myself, what's the difference? Just because in Japan it should work. <clears throat> and I remembered, back in the States I used garbage cans and they were beat up. That was a secret. They were all banged up and they had holes in them, so I was getting a, a re-oxidation in the States, but over there it was just too, not enough air getting into the container. So air is as important and the controlling of it is more important than the, the smoking. The other thing I can add that could help you, I don't know what kind of, uh, are you using a slip or clay or? Just a, uh, a high fire. Clay body. Clay body. Um, it needs to be covered with a, either a slip or 